Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering section 8.2 of Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. In this section, we're going to calculate the distance between points using this new uh, notation, the point notation where we have points defined as pairs of real numbers. And this really, this is going to show you how you can derive geometry from just a number system. And we're going to give it a name. It's going to be a lot of, lot of fun. Okay, so first we're going to talk about the distance between two points on a line. So we draw a line like this. And in the book, he has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so we have a point here at 1, and we have a point here at 4. And we want to calculate the distance. And you can just do basic subtraction. 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. So the distance between those points is 3, right? If we did it the other way, if we did 1 minus 4, then we would get minus 3. Well, you can't have negative distances. So this, this isn't going to work, right? We need something different to do this. Right? If we take the square, however, of the difference, so we take 4 minus 1 and square that, we're going to get 9, and 1 minus 4 squared is also going to equal 9. So there we have a positive number that shows up each time. It doesn't matter which order you take the points, you always get a positive number. Uh, so this distance squared is positive, it always will be positive. Uh, let's try what happens if we use uh, negative lines, negative points. So we have 0 here, negative 1 negative 2, and then we're going to have this go up to 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the distance between the point at negative 2 and the point at 3. So we're going to take 3 minus minus 2. And this is really important to remember that you're, you're taking the minus of a negative here. That is going to be the same as 3 plus 2, which is equal to 5. Okay. And if we do it the other way around, we start with minus 2, and then we subtract 3. So that's going to be the same as minus 2 minus 3, which is going to be minus 5, right? But if we take these squared, so we have 3 minus minus 2 squared, that's going to be 25. And then minus 2 minus 3 squared is also going to be 25, right? Because negative 5 squared is 25. All right, it doesn't matter which order you take it. As long as you square it, you're going to get a positive number. Uh, but this isn't the distance. This is the square of the distance. How do we get the distance? Well, we can just take the square root of this number. So the square root of 9 is always equal to 3. The square root is the positive. Now, this is different. So just remember that if we say x squared is equal to 9, then x could be plus or minus, x could be plus or minus 3, right? Right, that's when we take the square, uh, something squared is equal to something, then it could be plus or minus. But if we say x is equal to the square root of 9, then x can only be 3, because the square root sign says always take the positive. Okay, So then the square root down here of 25 is equal to 5. And this number here, this 3 and this 5, that's the actual distance between the points, and it doesn't matter which order you take the points in. All right. So we have a formula now, and this is the definition of a distance between x1 and x2 when they're on a line. So the distance between x1, the distance between x1 and x2 is the square root of x1 minus x2 squared. So we take the square root sign, the square root of that squared. All right. And it's important that you keep your minus signs straight. You don't mess up. And remember, the minus of a minus is a positive. This is good for calculating distances on lines, but we want to calculate distances on the plane for all the points on the plane. So let's remember that the Pythagorean theorem says this. So if we have a right triangle and we have a distance here of A, a distance here of B, and a distance here of C, the relationship between these three points is A squared plus B squared equals C squared, these three distances, right? Now, remember in algebra that if you have something squared is equal to something, then that something could be plus or minus. But in this case, because we're talking distances, it has to be plus. It has to be the positive because you can't have negative distances, not yet at least. All right, so let's take, uh, let's draw a triangle here on a piece of graph paper. Okay, so there's our graph paper. And we're going to take uh, and draw some things on here. So we're going to calculate the distance between the points 1, 2, and 3, 5. So the points are 1, 2, and 3, comma 5. So let's take a piece of graph paper um, and let's draw the points here. So we're going to choose the origin to be down here, O. We're going to choose the x-axis to be along this line. We're going to choose the y-axis to be along this line. I'm not drawing very straight. 
We'll take two jumps to be one, two, three, four, and five in the x direction. So y has to increase this direction. One, two, three, four, five, six up here for the y. So let's draw these points. So the first point is one comma two. So we go over one and up two. That's the first point. And the second point is three comma five. So we go over three and up five. So we get to this point here. And we want to calculate the distance between those two points here. And we notice that we can draw a right triangle this way. And the distance here is a distance between one and three, right? So that's going to be distance two. The distance here is a distance between two and five. So that's a distance three. And we're using, remember the formula is a square root of the first coordinate on that line minus the second coordinate squared. Okay. So using Pythagorean's theorem, what we can do is take x1 minus x2. So we take the distance here, that 2 is x1 minus x2. So we get the square root of 1 minus 3 squared. That'll get us 2. That's this, this direction here. And then the y direction, we take the square root of uh, 2 minus 5 squared, and that will get the distance 3. Okay. And then we plug these into this formula, so we get 2 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared. Okay, And so 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 plus 9 is 16, no, nope. 4 plus 9 is 13 equals c squared. And we're going to take the positive side, so c is equal to the square root of 13. It can't be negative distance, right? So that is the distance between these two points, a square root of 13, okay? Now, for the general case, we're going to write a formula where we take any x, y coordinate and we're gonna calculate the distance, okay? This could be any, the points could be in any quadrant. It could be in the positive x, positive y, negative x, negative y directions. The formula we're gonna do is the distance is equal to the square root. And we're taking the square root, positive square root, we're not taking the negative one. And then it's going to be x1 minus x2 squared. We're going to add y2 minus y1 squared. The order doesn't matter because they're independent. Okay, that's going to be the formula where the two points, so we're going to say p is x1 comma y1 and q is equal to x2 comma y2 and the distance between p and q is given by that formula. Square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. And that's the distance between those two points in the plane. And you can do two first or one first, it doesn't matter because the order doesn't matter. We've already determined that. All right. Let's calculate then using this new formula, the distance between the points, uh, what do they have in the book? One, two, one comma two, and 1 comma 3. That is going to be the square root of x1 minus x2 squared. So 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 squared, plus 2 minus 3 squared. So that's 2 minus 3 is minus 1. Minus 1 squared is just 1. So we'll have minus 1 squared. So that's going to be the square root of 0 plus 1, which is just 1. So the distance between these two points is 1, which is what you'd expect, right? Because if you draw this on the chart here, 1, 2, 1 comma 2 is here, and 1 comma 3 is right here. So this distance is one unit, right? All right. And another example, they want us to calculate the distance between negative 1, 5 and 4 comma minus, is that a 3? Minus 3, 4 comma minus 3. So we'll plug that into the formula. We'll take the square root. Let's see if that's on the paper. It is. So we'll take x1 minus x2 squared plus x1, y1 minus minus 3 squared. So that's going to be the square root. Let's slide this up. The square root minus 1 minus 4 is minus 5 squared is 25. 5 minus minus 3, that's 5 plus 3, which is 8 squared is 64. So that's going to be the square root of 25 plus 64, which is going to be the square root of 89. 
Now, if I did the second coordinate first, I would get square root of four minus minus one squared plus minus three minus five squared. It would get the same thing. It'd be the same thing. It was square, square root of three squared, which is, hold on, minus one, four minus five. Four minus minus one is five. See, even I can make mistakes. So 25 minus three minus five is minus eight squared was 64. You get you the same answer. So that's the distance between those two points. All right. Now, at this point, he gives you a warning. He says, hey, guys, always be careful when you meet minus signs. Place the parentheses carefully and remember the rules of algebra. So we can calculate the distance between points in any order. I already explained that. If we let D, P, Q, oh, remember, remind ourselves, and, and I, I did this here. I, it doesn't matter the order you use. If you use this one first or that one first, it doesn't matter. You can mix them up to, it all, you'll always get the same answer because of the way distance works, so not a big deal. And uh, so basically, having, done, having shown that, we know that the distance between the point P, Q is the same as the distance between the point Q, P, and this is actually dist two from chapter five. That's the disk two property of chapter five. <clears throat> so at this point, I'm going to lay down for you geometry and we're going to build geometry just from the number system that we have, right? So number one, we're going to assume numbers. We have numbers, congratulations, okay? And we know all the properties of these numbers plus properties. Okay? Number two, we are going to define the plane as the set of all pairs x comma y, right? Where x and y are in the real number set, right? So now we have a definition. Every point in the plane can be defined by the pair of those points. And finally, number three, we're going to define the distance between the point P and Q is equal to the square root of the PX, the X from P minus the X from Q squared plus the Y from P minus the Y from Q squared. All right, and he puts it as a distance between x and y, where he says distance between x comma y, where x is the point x1 comma y1, and y is the point x2 comma y2. He says this is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, which is the same thing, okay? And with this, we give, this is all that we need to prove uh, dist one, which we'll do in exercise 11. That will prove dist one from chapter five. And we're going to prove dist three. And we're gonna prove seg one and seg two. All these things are very easy to do just using these three properties. And so we can build all of geometry with just real numbers. That's the chapter. I wanted to go over the exercises really quick. Exercises one through 10 is just checking that you use this formula. Very basic stuff. 11 is pretty cool. It's not very hard, but you can use it to prove the property dist, um, dist one, I believe. No, dist, is it dist one? Yes. You can prove that two points are the same because the distance between them is zero. And it's pretty elegant proof. You don't need to assume anything than, other, than what's here. Uh, problem 12, remember back in section seven two, we multiplied excuse me, we multiplied points by numbers. Well, here, he's gonna define the dilation of points and what that means and how that works and do some properties with that. Um, and then the big exercise is this exercise in three space. I encourage you to try your hand at this. It's not very complicated, it's actually pretty easy. And once you see the rules for three space, you'll be able to deduce rules for four space as well. Anyway, with that, guys, thanks for watching. Take care and bye-bye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is part of a series on Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. You can catch the playlist over here and you can find out how to support my channel over here. Thanks so much, have a great day, bye bye.